When smog levels are high, asthmatics can develop serious health problems, many serious enough to require medical attention. Up to 1,300,000 asthma attacks each year in California are aggravated by air pollution. The ozone in smog also makes people more sensitive to allergens, such as dust mites, pet hair, mold, and pollen. The second group at high risk includes babies and small children. Their lungs are still developing and are more sensitive to smog. They also breathe in more air pollution because they breathe faster, bringing in three to four times more air per pound of body weight than adults. And smog reduces a child's breathing capacity even more than it does in adults. Because children have smaller airways, more particles stick to airway walls. Particulate matter may increase the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. Children living in smoggy areas have more respiratory infections, and studies show that they are more likely to develop poorly functioning lungs later in life. Even when children active in unhealthy air don't show symptoms, they are still likely to suffer loss compared to children who grow up in cleaner air. Research is showing that children who live in areas with high particulate matter levels are at risk for poor lung development, making them more susceptible to lung disease as adults. Research also shows that active children living in the most ozone polluted communities develop more cases of asthma than children in other areas. When ozone levels peak, kids miss more school days. A third group is at increased air pollution risk. Healthy adults of all ages who exercise or work hard outdoors. During exercise, we breathe in as much as 10 times our resting volume of air, exposing us to 10 times more air pollution. We breathe through the mouth instead of the nose, bypassing filters in the nose that otherwise would filter out half of the particles inhaled. We're learning more every year about the harmful health effects of air pollution. So it's important that we continue to reduce smog levels. To do this, we need answers to questions such as how much smog is too much smog. Air quality standards have been established for the main ingredients in smog, ozone, NOx, and particulate matter. These standards are the concentration levels in the air environment that have been determined as reasonably safe for most people. Air quality standards give a number that planners and government can target to reduce air pollution to healthy levels. Hundreds of air pollution monitoring stations are spread across California, continuously monitoring the air, recording air pollution levels. Air quality agencies use the data to see if air quality standards are being achieved. How can people find out about air pollution levels where they live? Well, there's a simple way. The Air Quality Index, or AQI, gives people a gauge of air pollution severity where they live and work. The AQI takes into account levels of ozone and sometimes other air pollutants. Readings of 0 to 50 indicate good air quality. 50 to 100 is moderate. When levels reach 100 to 150, it's considered unhealthy for sensitive groups. 150 to 200 is unhealthy for all groups. And 200 to 300 is very unhealthy. When air quality worsens to unhealthy levels, what can we do to protect our health? First of all, try to stay indoors. Reduce any outdoor activity that requires heavy exertion, such as running or heavy labor. Walk instead of run. Because smog levels are usually lower in the early morning and evening, you should schedule outdoor exercise during these times. Children should avoid strenuous outdoor play. For some air pollutants, any amount is too much. We call these pollutants air toxics because any measurable level can impact your health. California has nearly 200 chemical substances on the list of air toxics. To be on the list, the substance must be one, an irritant. Two, a carcinogen, a substance that increases the likelihood of getting cancer. Or three, a reproductive toxin. Air toxics can be localized around fixed industrial sites, 
and people who live near such sites can be more at risk. Other air toxics are not localized to a specific area. Benzene, which comes from gasoline, and diesel exhaust affect people over a wide region because they're emitted from cars, trucks, and buses. Scientists have found increased risk of lung cancer among people exposed to diesel exhaust particles. Exposure to air toxics causes over 300 cases of cancer each year in California. It's the subject of intensive research. The health effects of air pollution produce serious economic consequences. <laughs> air pollution means increased health care costs, increased doctor visits, increased hospital admissions, babies born prematurely or with low birth weight, babies born with developmental defects, children who can't go to school or have trouble doing well even when they're there. It means workers who don't go to work, families who pack up and look for jobs somewhere else, suffering and premature death to the most sensitive. An Air District study in Southern California discovered that smog causes nearly 18 million person days a year of headaches, sore throats, coughing, chest pain, and burning eyes. The human ill health effects of smog cost us over $9.4 billion every year, and that's just in Southern California. These are the real costs that everyone pays for. Smog not only harms our health, but it hurts the economy today and for future generations. But the good news is that fighting air pollution pays off. The US EPA figured the cost and benefits of fighting air pollution nationwide between 1970 and 1990. Cost to fight? About $523 billion. But the benefit in terms of sickness and premature death prevented was about $22 trillion. The net benefit to the country was about $21 trillion. We've made a lot of progress cleaning up the air over the past 50 years, but we still have further to go. Industry and transportation will continue to run cleaner. But there is also a role for each of us as individuals. How you get to work, to school, or to the store makes an air quality difference. Choose a carpool, take the bus or light rail, walk or ride a bike if you can. Your clean air choices are critical in the fight against air pollution. With every breath you take, you can be part of the fight for clean air. Thanks for watching.